Hi, I'm Matt with K15T and we're going to look at creating a page in Confluence. We'll look at where you can start creating the page, why that matters. We'll talk a little bit about page templates and how those speed up the process. We'll take a look at page titles, emojis, and page headers to see how those impact the way people see our pages. And then finally, we'll talk about page width and how that impacts the content on our page. First things first, where do we create our page? If I want to make a new page right below this one that I'm looking at on the page hierarchy, I can just hit this big blue create button and jump right into the editor. But if I know exactly where I want my page to be in the page hierarchy, I can navigate down in here and find exactly where I want it. So say I want to put a page beneath the document style documentation style guide page in the hierarchy. I can hit this little plus button right here and jump into the editor to create a page underneath that one in the overall hierarchy. In my case, I want to make one beneath this page. So I'm going to hit this big blue create button. Now, the first thing you might notice is the panel over here on the right hand side and that is full of page templates that will help you get started more quickly. Or maybe you want to hit the import tab here if you've already created something in Word or Google Docs and you just want to import that content in Confluence. When you're looking at the templates, you can hover over each one to get an example of what they look like. And then you can click one and throw it right into the editor to see, hmm, is that what I'm looking for? Eh, not quite. You can also use these filters here to filter things down Maybe you want to look at just templates that are related to business strategy, or maybe like me, you already know the name of the one that you're looking for. So I'm going to throw the project plan template right into the editor here and go ahead and close the panel. The first thing I'm going to do on this page is give it a great title. So uh, logo redesign. So a couple things to know here. First of all, this has to be a unique name. There can only be one page in this space called Logo Redesign. So just keep that in mind. Also, this is the name that will show up when people are navigating Confluence, when they're searching for things. So make sure this name has all the keywords that people really want to know about to find this particular page that you're creating. Also, you may want to put a page prefix here. So maybe because this is a project, I might want to put PROJ at the beginning, just so people know that or can search for that. We have a whole nother video all about best practices for naming pages, which you might want to check out. The next thing to think about is adding an emoji for the page. So I can add an emoji that sort of sums up what this page is about. So I think this check mark emoji is pretty good because it's a project, but maybe you want something totally unique. So you can also come over here and add a custom emoji. I added one of my face. Nobody's going to want that. I'm, I'm going to change that. I can also add a header image to the page. So header images are great because I can find an image that I think fits really nicely. I can drag it around until it's just where I want it and apply it. It just adds a little bit of visual interest and also can add more meaning to the rest of the content of the page. In this case, I want to use a custom image that my designers gave me that I think just kind of fits our brand a bit better. It'll, it'll fit this page that I'm trying to make just a little bit better. So this is great. I've added a little bit of visual interest to my page. One other thing to keep in mind, if you've forgotten where you're creating this page in the page hierarchy, you can look up here. This is called the breadcrumb area. And here you can see where this new page is in the page hierarchy. You can also click any one of these to go to that particular page if you're feeling like you want to go somewhere else. Now, the final thing to think about is what we're actually going to put on this page because that matters. So for example, if we're going to do some very data heavy content, so large tables or diagrams, or maybe even a two column approach, you might want to come over here to this button and go whoosh, make it a really, really wide page. This is great for large tables, those two column uh, illustrations, or maybe just very large designs or diagrams. This is not particularly good for a page that's going to have a lot of written content because eyes have to scroll across the page. It's kind of uncomfortable, not really ideal. So you might want to go and just suck that page in to sort of a, a more standard layout. This is great for reading through content, but never fear if you're like, well, yeah, I have a lot of written content, but then I have one table that I want to make really, really big. You can use the width button on any one of those elements like images, tables, even some macros to make them as wide as you'd like to sort of mix and match your content to make sure it fits the best for your readers. And then finally, I can hit the publish button to publish my page so everybody can read it. And just like that, we've created a new page in Confluence. We figured out where to create it in the page hierarchy. We picked a great template to use. We gave it a good title, emoji, and page header. And then finally, we picked a great width for the content on the page. Oh, and we talked about breadcrumbs, which makes me want to eat a salad. 
And this is just creating a page. There is so much more we can do in Confluence. So jump into another video in this course as we continue to explore how to use the Confluence editor to share what you do best.